Hi folks, this is Tom, your frugal prepper. Um, so I started thinking, how could I charge my 18 volt cordless drill without having to use the power inverter? Because the power inverter, of course, wastes a lot of energy because you convert it from 12 volts to 120 volt AC and then back to a DC voltage in the, the wall transformer. Um, so, you know, you're losing, you know, 30% of your power typically is just wasted, plus what might get wasted in heat here. Um, so it might be almost as much as half your power in a world world scenario. Well, you want to conserve your power when you're charging from the sun. So, um, what I did is I took a look at this AC adapter. And this AC adapter, I measured it. And it says it puts out 21 volts at a half an amp. So I measured the voltage on this guy. And like most cheap Chinese wall transformers, it puts out quite a bit more than its rated setting. In fact, this is putting out close to 27 volts. So I thought, well, if this is rated here for a 21 volt input, but it's getting 27, it's obviously got regulation circuitry in here. Okay. And so it should run okay off of 24 volts. If I take two batteries, two 12 volt batteries in series, they put out 24 volts. So um, well, I dug through my batteries and found another good gel cell. Uh, I think this is my last good one. I gotta recycle the rest and see if I can get some more. I get most of these from working on computer stuff where we have to replace UPS batteries. Well, a lot of times only one battery or two batteries is bad in the set and it might, some of those UPSs have a lot of batteries. But most of them have either two, four, or some of the bigger ones have eight. But there are some big, like, whole room server UPSs that take a hundred, you know. Um, but anyway, I save these, and I, I just save the best ones for my use. Uh, and now I take and you hook the positive and negative together in the middle here between these two. And then this will be this negative will be 24 volts negative, and 20, this will be your positive for your 24 volts. So I ran those down, and this is the cigarette lighter plug that is for my uh, uh, rapid battery charger, which I had in another video. Um, so this uh, little guy here uh, goes to that, but it's just wired straight through, so it'll put through the 24 volts. There's no regulation inside this plug. Um, and then I hook that into here. So if I go ahead and now hook up, hope this is hard to do one-handed. Let me slide this plastic back. There we go. Go ahead now and hook this up. Okay, now I've got 24 volts going in, and you can see that it is charging the stro battery. So I now have a way to charge this battery off-grid without having to use the inverter. Now to charge these, you can charge them in parallel, which is where you just take both negatives and hook them together and both positives and hook them together. And then I will hook that into the uh, leads on my solar panel, um, which are, and this is my little 10 watt panel. And then I have my leads. The black one is the negative with the black tape on it so that I can remember. And I just hook those both in parallel to that set that out in the sun and it charges. Now that panel says 10 watts, but it'll do a good job charging batteries, but it did not do a good job charging batteries when I had a charge controller in it. It puts out just shy of an amp in full sun. Um, I mean like point, I want to say it was like 0.97 amps when I measured it. Um, but your charge controller takes three quarters of an amp sometimes to run, so then you're using all your voltage for the charge controller and getting hardly anything out to the batteries. So if you hook it direct to the batteries, that works great, but you just have to measure your voltage on your batteries every so often. And you know what I do is I just come out when it's charging, I unhook the panel temporarily. Move the camera. Okay. I hook on my negative to one. This is after you unhook your solar panel and you hook this onto the other one and you'll measure it. And you'll want to see, let me move my multi-tester over here too, that it'll put out, you know, when it's fully charged and it's not going to take any more of a charge, 
it'll be just over 13 volts and I'm seeing here now this is just under 13 volts on the meter um, so it's still got a pretty good charge but you just have to measure them like that because you don't want to overcharge sealed lead acid batteries typically if you get them much above 13.8 volts that battery is going to be irreparably damaged and it's going to start to bulge so uh, the good thing is with a small 10 watt panel like that you, you have a little leeway now if you start trying to charge these up on a 60 watt panel or something or even my 50 watt panel you have to watch it real close if you don't have a charge controller uh, but that way you can charge both of these so they're 7 amp hour batteries so if they were completely dead now I never run them more than about half dead um, then you would have you know it would take uh, 14 hours to charge both of these pretty much off that panel but um, if you're running them down 50% and then you charge them a day in the sun at 7 hours we'll charge these back up um, and so then um, what I did is you know I hooked that in got my drill going now this battery is having a little bit of what I call whisker damage and a lot of people mistakenly call this memory effect they're like oh I, these NICAD batteries have memory um, memory is a phenomenon that's only noticed in NICAD batteries in situations like uh, satellites which circle the earth okay where at the exact second of every day is when they start charging and that's exactly when they discharge okay and that's when we first notice the phenomenon of a memory effect in batteries to where they don't want to discharge below that point anymore and they don't want to charge above that point anymore and so what they had to do on satellites is make it so that they continue to draw power for a random amount of time even after they lose the sunlight or get the sunlight and they um, and they start charging at a random time after the sunlight returns so that it's not within like that exact second every day unless it charges to exactly the same point and discharges to exactly the same point repeatedly over the process of say a year you won't get memory effect in NICADs so why do you have NICADs that seem to like you know you charge them up they seem charged um, and then they go dead right away okay or they don't and people think like oh, it's just not holding much of a charge because it's got a memory effect and that's actually incorrect um, NICADs uh, with the chemistry inside of them what they do is when they're left on a charger at say a hundred percent charge you know or just people just leave them sitting in the charger um, they will grow a uh, whisker in between the anode and the cathode and it's just a little whisker filament from the chemistry of the battery it grows a conductive whisker in between those two now it can't conduct much current but it conducts a little the more whiskers it grows the longer you leave it sitting around at a full charge the faster that that process will happen so how do you get rid of them well you over voltage them and what you do is you let the battery run as far down as possible you know let it run dead like you normally would and then you hit it with like more than double its voltage um, so I would probably zap this one with the 48 volts um, which would be four of these batteries hooked in series and you just tap across the terminals on that NICAD battery pack for a few seconds pop it back in the charger and it'll work like new again and I might do a video and show you how I do that um, but when you store your batteries do not store them in the charger do not keep them hundred percent charged all the time you want to store them at about eighty percent charge um, if they're NICAD batteries um, what that will cause is for the whiskers not to grow and that battery will stay good for a long long time in fact a NICAD battery will outlive nickel metal hydroxide and will probably outlive a lithium but lithiums can put out more power um, in this you know more power faster without overheating than an NICAD can um, but nickel metal hydroxides don't have great, uh, you know, on-demand high power require, you know, availability, and they don't have a real long longevity just because of their chemistry. NICADs, you know, there are NICAD batteries that have been orbiting in satellite in space since the 60s, and they still work perfectly as long as they don't charge them and discharge them at exactly the same time every day and they will last forever and ever because they never bring them up to a 100 percent charge they bring them out to 80 percent and then use them 
So you want to over design batteries that way too if you're working on a project with NICAS. But yes, there are NICADs that have been in service in outer space on satellites for more than 50 years, and they're working just fine. So the whole memory effect thing is really just a myth. Um, anyway, um, if you like this video and you'd like to see more videos like this, you know, please like and subscribe to my channel, and feel free to leave me a note that you decided to subscribe. If you have videos or types of videos that you'd like to see or would like to see more of on my channel, please just leave me a message and I'll try to make more videos like that. Um, I try to cover a lot of little projects and just simple things like this that are going to help you out in a time of disaster that are just handy to know. This is Tom, your frugal prepper.